take, you know, walks along the pier, and I noticed over a period of two or three years that the a certain time of the year in April, uh, most of the boats came back loaded with inkfish, cuttlefish, or as they say in Concal, margat. And I, re I realised that, of course, that was the basis for sepia ink. That's what sepia ink is made from. And I thought, I wonder if one day I can use that to reflect what I'm, what I'm seeing. I thought about it and thought about it. Then I decided I'd like to reflect the landing of a catch on the pier in Concarle of Inkfish. So I chose the date and the right tide and I nailed to the wooden pier eight very large canvases and allowed the fishermen to walk over them, the tractors to drive over them, the ink to splash on it from the, from the boxes. In part of the performance, the beginning of the performance, I was I was la lowered onto one of the boats and came up in the cradle that normally carry the inkfish. <laughs> this series of work came out of the out of the ink that was. Um, um, in the inkfish, the defensive mechanism, and it was absolutely wonderful. And what was amazing was that the, because it was in salt water, it automatically fixed itself as well. By chance I had a show in San Francisco and I went into this Japanese shop because I'm interested in Japanese art and he had this pile of Japanese account books which are incredibly beautiful calligraphy and I thought I wonder if I could use those in in a few collages and, and make some some reference to the stones so I did and I made these these collages and they're called Accounting for the Stones. Can you drive over that for me? And he did, and that was the form it took. When I moved to Ireland, I moved into a house, uh, and in the proximity was a stone circle, so I decided to make a series of works about stone circles. And then I thought I'd quite like to get into that Irish mythology, I mean, just written, read James Stephen's Irish fairy tales. So I recreated the Dunbeak and Stone Circle in transparent netting, rubbings and paintings, and that became important for my work.
moved to New York for a while. I had a studio, and um, as in all of my work, place is important. And I noticed instead of looking up, as most tourists do at the buildings, I was looking down at the road, at the story that the tarmac was telling. In fact, in the, in the sort of fast-moving society, and I noticed that in the tarmac there were articles that had obviously been discarded or dropped and they'd been pounded into the tarmac by the traffic and these became little sort of abstract um, works really in the tarmac. is always involved in place. I always reflect where I am, where I'm living or where I'm working. It's, it's about place. I started seeing these wonderful shaped stones. I came up with the idea of taking a stone, using the lost wax method, casting the stone in glass and reversing the whole idea of shadow.